Hey there everybody and welcome back. You know, I was really hoping that by now we'd be enjoying the PMDG 777 on FSX Steam Edition by now, but unfortunately it looks like there are a couple of delays that have stopped PMDG from pushing the update. So, in the meantime, I'm browsing the internet looking for new ways to enhance my flight simulation experience, and we came across this really, really cool solution that's completely free head tracking for anyone who owns a uh, Android smartphone. So, first of all, this is how I found it. I was on uh, Sky's YouTube Rock Ola, or Guy or Gal, not really sure, and I saw this thing that said P3D with smartphone head tracking. Now, it seemed like a really elegant solution. Uh, however, when I looked in the description, I didn't really see any instructions on how to set this whole thing up or how exactly it worked. So, I decided to go out on my own and figure out how to make it work, and uh, I wanted to make a tutorial for all of you so that you all could enjoy it as well. So, first of all, let's talk about what you'll need. You'll need two things and I'll place the links to the descriptions down below. First thing you'll need is uh, the client side and the server side application that allows your smartphone to interface with the head tracking solution or the spatial tracking solution. This one is called Trinis Geary and after my research and also from the description of that video I found this to be the best uh, solution that's out there right now uh, for spatial tracking um, without a webcam. So you're gonna go over the download link and you're going to download two things. Number one, you're going to download the client-side application, which actually goes on your smartphone from the Google Play Store. Now, there's a test version. There's also a full version. The full version is $6.23, and the test version is completely free, but it limits you to 10-minute usage uh, spans at a time. So after 10 minutes, the application will close on your smartphone. You just have to relaunch it and you can use it again. Great for takeoffs and landings, and unless you're going to be using them all the time, you may not need the full version, but for six bucks, hey, it's a heck of a lot cheaper than a $200 track IR. So download the test version to your smartphone first, and you can do this either from your smartphone or you can also push it here um, off of the Google Play Store. And then you're going to download the uh, client side server right here. The second thing you're going to download is FaceTrack No IR. And FaceTrack No IR is the software that interfaces with FSX Steam Connect. I'm, I'm sorry, Steam Connect. FSX Sim Connect, and allows uh, your head tracking software to interface with the view uh, functions of FSX. So you go ahead and click the Download Now link, and you download whatever the current installer is, which right now is uh, 1.7. So you download that. Now. I put these here on my desktop just for demonstration's sake, but you can put it anywhere on your computer you'd like, whether it be in my documents or my games or on your C drive or whatever you'd like. First thing you're going to do is uh, unzip the Trinis Geary, Geary <laughs> however you say that, uh, software. And then you're going to install the setup uh, FaceTime, I'm sorry, FaceTime, FaceTrack No IR. My brain is associating these names with uh, other things that I know of. So uh, you're going to uh, set up the FaceTrack No IR. And I'm going to show you guys how to set this up specifically for FSX. Now, you can play with this, um, and you can use it for other applications as well as you'd like. But just to keep it simple for you FSXers out there, I'm going to show you how to install it um, with FSX-specific um, installation. So here, you're going to have a bunch of options as all the different interfaces that you can use. Now, for FSX, you really only need to do this. Number one, we're going to be using um, the uh, face... Uh, API tracker so you can actually get rid of the AIC and you can also get rid of the IR point tracker also we're only going to be needing to use um, the uh, uh, EWMA um, filter uh, it, I'm sorry we're not going to be using the EWMA filter we're going to be using the more um, advanced version or the latest version of the uh, movement filter which is the advanced fil uh, filter algorithm um, next, uh, obviously we're going to be using it for Microsoft FSX, so we can get rid of all the rest of these as well. Alright, and so those are the three things we'll be set setting up. The Face API Tracker, the uh, um, Advanced Filter Algorithm, and the uh, Protocol for Microsoft FSX, which is the Sim Connect, um, connect, uh, connect add-on. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and install them, and let that run. So now, um, the rest is pretty easy. So we see the link here that's been created on our desktop. And actually for the uh, Trinus um, application, you actually do not need to run it um, or install it at all. It's actually just a standalone um, module. So 
uh, before we get started, what you want to do is you want to go on your Android smartphone and make sure that you turn Wi-Fi on. Now, um, you do have to either have some sort of a USB interface to your computer or have um, a good Wi-Fi connection to the computer that's going to be running FSX because your smartphone is going to have to interface, um, obviously, uh, with this um, server-side application. So turn the Wi-Fi on your phone. And you can go ahead and actually just open up the uh, the application on your smartphone um, to uh, start these next couple of steps. So first, let's uh, open up the Trinus uh, server, and you're just going to open up this application right here, which is the TG server. And this is going to allow your computer to interface with your smartphone. So here it is. And the second thing you're going to do is start face track no error. Now you actually may see this crash a couple of times during this demo, but um, you just restarted. It. It's a piece of cake. So um, to set this up properly, what you're going to do is you're going to go over here to the um, APIs and you're going to actually run the Facetrack No IR UDP under Tracker Source 1. Filter, we're going to go to the Excella filter, which is the one that we installed. This is the advanced filter. And then Game Protocol, obviously FSX Sim Connect. So once again, Facetrack No IR UDP for the master tracker source. The filter is going to be the Excella filter MK2. And then the game protocol will be FSX Sim Connect. The one last thing that you need to do here is you need to click on the settings under the tracker source first. And here, this port number, you're actually going to change it to 5556. It will not work unless it's set to 5556. So make sure that you set that. All right. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go on down here to our uh, Trinus server. And you can actually leave uh, pretty much all these things by themselves. The only tr thing that we're going to be changing is uh, if you have mouse here set by default, you're going to want to open up the open track redirect. So you're going to um, go to the sensor type and change it over to the open track redirect. That's pretty much all you have to do here. Now, there are some other options here, the fake 3D. Um, I'll explain these to you real quickly without getting into too much detail. As you all know, Oculus Rift is an option that's out there in terms of... Uh, um, 3D immersion and head tracking 3D immersion. Um, myself, I used to use uh, Track RR, but after a while, it just became too cumbersome, and I thought to myself, well, I might as well just wait for the Oculus Rift's uh, consumer version to come out so I can have a truly immersive experience where I'm not just swiveling my head and keeping my eyes fixated on the screen, but I can really feel as though I'm in the space. Now, there are actually ways that you can use modern Android smartphones to emulate that, and you can use little cheap uh, devices such as this this one's a Color Cross Universal Virtual Reality headset. You guys also know that Samsung came out with their um, Gear VR headset, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Basically, this allows your smartphone to um, create a 3D screen that allows you to have greater immersion. And this program also facilitates that for you. So you can do things like fake 3D, where you can get your smartphone to emulate a 3D uh, display, and then what mode you want it to operate in, um, and uh, and then the quality, etc. So here, since I'm not using fake 3D, I put this to disabled, mode to fast, um, and then the quality very low. If you put it to ultra, that would mean that your smartphone would basically emulate the image that's on your screen to a very, very high fidelity, which of course means that as you're using it as a fake 3D device, um, the screen quality that you're seeing on your smartphone uh, would be that much more immersive. But we're not using it here, at least in this video. Maybe later on I'll make one. So I just put this to very low so that I have a, um, a uh, better connection in terms of the spatial tracking between my smartphone and uh, FSX and, um, and these interfaces. So. I did also select enhanced motion. So enhanced motion, disabled fast, leave the border to the far left, and then very low on the quality. And that is pretty much it. So what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and start the uh, um, face track no IR interface. And allow access to your networks. Because obviously we'll need Wi-Fi. And then you're going to click the power button here and allow access to the uh, server side. Then on your smartphone, you're actually going to see a couple of settings. And I'll demonstrate for you what these settings should look like here. So uh, I think if you go here, let's see, help maybe. So so this is what the interface looks like. Um, let me open it up on YouTube so you guys can see it better. This is what the interface looks like on your smartphone, if I can find it. Okay, so this right here is what the interface will look like on your smartphone. So on your smartphone, if you're not using the 3D functions, what you're going to do is you're going to leave the video port at 777, and you're going to select these last three and these last three alone. Leave lens co correction, stop, start, gesture off, and see-through gesture off. But you're going to put on enhanced quality, 
buffering and frame skip. Basically, enhanced quality um, buffering and frame skip will allow your smartphone to give you the best tracking experience, not the best video experience, because once again, we're not using this for video purposes, um, but uh, to give you the best tracking experience um, as you're uh, using it. So you're going to click these last three options, leave the first three off, and that's how you're going to set up on your smartphone. Then you hit that little power button, and everything should be interface. So let's take a quick look at the uh, there you go so if you look on the face track no IR you can see that my smartphone is now tracking in space and you can see that you see the yaw pitch and roll axes here um, and uh, just to let you guys know how this works there are three axes so there is yaw which allows your smartphone to be tracked um, side to side like that you have uh, I'm sorry, yaw is actually this way, so left and right. In other words, if you're looking around the cockpit, you have pitch, which is forward and back, and then roll, which is side to side. So since we have the API that's running on FSX already, let's go into FSX and see if it's actually working. So it is. So I just have to get it oriented here. So as you guys can see, and I'll actually go full screen for you, as you guys can see, I am now tracking with FaceTrack, No IR, and Trinus uh, in FSX. And I can look around. And it's a very smooth experience. It's pretty cool. So if I were to unpause this, you can look around. Actually, zoom out with my keyboard, and uh, I can have a very, very smooth track RR-like experience right here using my regular old Android smartphone, completely for free. Now, the one thing I would say. To uh, be aware of is that your smartphone may not always uh, originally be in a in a position where it'll properly configure to um, your FSX. So what I would recommend doing, and I'm going to go ahead and turn off the application on my smartphone now. If you see my my view reset to the center, um, what I would recommend doing is uh, actually um, uh, let's do this. Putting your smartphone down on the table, um, or you know, on your head, or strapping it to your head, or however you're going to do it, and 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 put it in the position where um, you uh, want it to be centered, or where you want it to start at, and then from there. Um, engage the application and then it will be centered so now you know it's a little bit easier to control because when I first picked up my smartphone it was in a weird position and so that was that's how it was treated as default but now um, you know it's flat on the table and I can move it up and down and steer with it um, I'm sure there's ways that you could figure out how to strap your smartphone to your device especially if you have a smaller device um, I have a very very big phone I have the Nexus 6 so I actually kind of ghetto rigged with double-sided velcro a way of strapping this thing to the top of my headset and uh, that's how I now use it to track around so it's a great little application. Um, I'd really recommend that if you do want some sort of a head tracking solution without spending a ton of money on a track IR, um, this is probably a great solution. So um, go ahead and try it out for yourself. Uh, I think that you'll find it to be a very, very cool, uh, quick and easy solution. And I think that it works very well and it's very functional. All right, everybody. Well, once again, look forward to talking to you here very, very soon um, uh, as FSX Steam Edition um, gets updated with uh, PMDG. And until then, uh, hope you guys enjoy. Everybody take care.